What's up guys, we're here, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm bringing you, scratch that, it's not Barrage, I'm bringing you Multi-Shot Rogue. You see it here, Multi-Shot Rogue. I'm so happy that this is here. I got so emotional when we put this build together and we got to actually play it. This build is so crazy. It's by far arguably one of the best rogue builds in the game, if not the best rogue build in the game. And I had to go ahead and, and just add Adam Jackson because I've been begging the devs for multi-shot and this is the closest that we've ever got it. So hopefully we get an item in the future that changes Barrage to multi-shot, it would be fantastic. But without further ado, this is Poison Multi-Shot Rogue. It is absolutely insane. I'm gonna go over everything for the video, skills, gear, uh, any any swap outs that you could do the paragon etc all that great stuff so let's go ahead and hop right into it all right so let's first go over the skills for the build here let's go ahead and, and break these down now i don't want people to get confused this isn't a barrage build at all this is a poison build that is built solely off of andariel's Versage. so before breaking down all of the skills this helmet is 100% mandatory for this build. You cannot play this without this build or without this helmet. You have to have it, okay? You have to have it, and I'll break down the gear adjustments that you can make, but you cannot play this build without it. Okay, with that said, let's go into skills. So we got two points in the heart seeker here. This is just to advance us through. This could this could literally be anything. This could be puncture. It, it, it doesn't matter what it is at all. We're not using a basic in this build. Um, so we're just taking the two points to get down to our court. Then we're taking barrage, one point in barrage, um, up into improved barrage. So on the third cast, we can help make enemies vulnerable, super easy. Then we got two points in the sturdy, which really, let me go ahead and make this correctly. I've been having the speed on. You want three points into uh, sturdy here for DR. Then we're gonna come down, we're doing a uh, shadow step into discipline shadow step. This is your only form of unstoppable. So if you get caught in any crowd control effects, poison, whatever it is, you're stuck, you know, the mobs got you surrounded, you need to get out. Shadow step is here, we are not taking dash. However, you can swap out smoke grenade for dash totally optional if you can i just like smoke grenade for the additional damage and the additional shadow totem placement uh, we'll talk about that in a second when we get into the gear then we're going to be taking unstable elixirs this is actually like a rework this is actually really powerful using a health potion stuns surrounding enemies which applies to cc which gives us more damage but then increases our damage by 18 percent multiplicative for 10 seconds and now we can drink health potions while at full life so this is just 18% free damage. Insane. Then we're gonna come down. I'm taking Agile. Uh, using a cooldown increases our dodge so we can take less damage. Uh, then we're maxing out Exploit and Malice for even more damage. Then we got Dark Shroud with Enhanced Dark Shroud, okay? Gives us more movement speed. We are very, very fast in this build. And Dark Shroud will give us our damage reduction here. Now, I do not have damage reduction on the bar and that is because in our gear pieces here, we're running Umbris. Every time we do a lucky hit crit, we have 60% chance to spawn a Dark Shroud, which is gonna give us DR and move speed. Uh, now, when you come down here, we also have, where is it? We're back here. We also have Poison Trap, okay, into Subverting. We deal 15% multiplicative damage to enemies standing inside of our Poison Trap. Super powerful. This allows us just to not only do more damage, and poison them which allows us to kill them quicker with our damage over time effects but using a sub skill is going to place one of our traps from our weapon pieces now i've opted for smoke grenade here uh, you could also do concealment if you really wanted to but smoke grenade is another sub skill this is going to plant another uh totem but this dazes our enemies and then they take 25 percent multiplicative increased damage from us for uh, five seconds. This is incredibly powerful when you against bosses like Lilith and Durial, Uber Durial, which you're about to see us fight. Uh, next, we're coming down. We're taking Poison Imbuement into Mixed Poison Imbuement. On a lucky hit, skills have a 30% chance to reduce the, the cooldown. However, you could also do Blended, okay? This is just to do our cooldowns. to That way we can redo Poison Imbuement. This really helps when... Uh, like our poison imbued skills. So pretty much what this does is that when we pop our, our poison imbuement, we attack so fast with barrage 
you can see here that we attack so fast with barrage that this is going to get reset so we'll always have uh poison imbuement active at all times we should have permanent uptime on this which is very very important for the build otherwise we don't do a whole lot of damage next we're taking three points into deadly venom uh three points into uh alchemic 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 low the alk advantage here this is what you're going to want on your amulet this is where we do a crap ton of damage here because of our attack speed and lucky hit chance huge then we got debilitating toxins for less damage that we deal to poison enemies we got three points into fridge of finesse for even more damage because we are going to apply a lot of chill and freeze then we're going to come down we are going to be taking death trap with the extension here uh, the only reason that i had the stutter step on is because i was speed farming nightmare dungeons and stuff like that so i wanted to be as fast as possible but normally we're going to do max out death trap um you don't have to you could take these two points and put them somewhere else if you really wanted to um you can put them in second wind if you want for more um fortify or barrier if you really want if you're really like fragile and you don't want to take a lot of damage um you could add them back into this you could add them in siphoning strikes you could i mean there's a lot of options here. You can even put them into rugged for damage over time effects. You kind of got two free points here, so just use them up to you. Um, then we got max points into intervention. So chance to gain energy. This is what's going to help us to allow to keep spamming our barrage so we don't run out of energy. One into second win for barrier. And then alchemist fortune non-physical damage has even more increased lucky hit chance because we do need that a lot. Our key passive is going to be close quarters combat here. Damage you're going to meet with marksman or cutthroat skills grant 15% attack speed for eight seconds. While we have both, we deal 10% multiplicative damage versus crowd control. The current is 25. So pretty much we do shadow set for cutthroat and then marksman for barrage. And then we get both bonuses and we attack like crazy. Now into our skill tree. Um, well, before that, let's go or into our items. Before we do that, let's do specialization. We are doing preparation. Okay, preparation here. Inner Sight is fine too. Um, but because dot does damage doesn't crit, Inner Sight is, is only just okay. We would only need it to have the full spam. But you'll see when we fight that we don't need this. So we do preparation. Spend 75 energy to reduce our ultimate skills cooldown, which is Death Trap. Ultimate skills resell other cooldowns and grant 50% damage reduction. So not only do we become tankier, but it resets these skills. More importantly, our poison abutment so we can keep spamming into our gear pieces here like i said you need andy's visage 100 you cannot play this build without it try to get the crit on attack speed here very important now we do are using Tyrael's might this really helps us hit our resistant caps and more damage reduction however Tyrael's might is not required for this build um, however it is a huge damage increase because we are always at full life so we always get the D divine barrage dealing the extra damage it's extra damage it's free um, however, if you don't have this chest piece, you could use a normal one. I would advise getting like dexterity, uh, armor, and then like maybe max life, something like that. Um, and then you, what you would do is you would craft on something similar like this, where you would have lucky hit chance for like freeze. And then you would do another one where you have like damage or something like that. Dodge chance is also very good. Next is Fist of Fate. Now this is a controversial one for me in this build. Um, but it is necessary. You do need it. So I don't like Fist of Fate on the random attacks dealing random damage. So when you break down the math on Fist of Fate, if you have a max 300%, on average, you're going to deal 50% of what your normal damage would be always. So on the low end, obviously, it's bad. But then on the high end, you deal much more damage. So I don't like that fact. However, this is required because of the huge lucky hit chance here. And you want to crit on these. Uh, so that way we have a huge lucky hit chance in our barrage here at 30%. And more importantly, the lucky hit chance to apply a random crowd control effect. The reason that that is important is because on our weapons and our rings and amulet, we have, uh, where is it? No, no, excuse me. On our, our weapon, our creeping death power, we deal 40% increased damage over time to enemies for each crowd control effect that they are under. So if we have stunned them, we froze them, uh, we've slowed them, you know, we, you know, stagger a boss. We deal that much damage multiplicative for each one, which is so important. So that's why Fist of Fate is so great. 
because we have a 37 and a half chance to apply a random CC effect for two seconds. Um, next, we have Umbris, like I've already went over. We want to get uh, Aftermath on there, and this gives us our DR and um, move speed. On our boots, we got Noxus Ice, okay? Days and then Dark Shroud movement speed increase is fantastic. Chilled enemies poisoned by poison imbuement skills will be further chilled, so this helps our CC stuff. And then we deal 35% multiplicative additional uh, poison damage to frozen enemies, which really helps us against like an uber durial fight. On our bow, of course, we just went over Creeping Death, but you want to crit on Chance for Barrage projectiles to be cast twice. And now the second temper on here is very important. This is what we have on our weapons, our ring, and our amulet, which is so good. It is damage is increased per Dark Shroud Shadow. This is a lot of damage that we're adding here. Now, it is additive damage, but it is very, very good damage. We should always, always, always have all five of our shrouds our dark shroud so it's that percent times five so it's 500 percent extra damage on this one you know another 300 and something percent from this one another what one two 250 percent here and then another almost 400 percent here just in additive damage so huge huge if it's a brand new temper this season it's awesome on our regular dagger because we are up close most of the time we got bursting venoms here this is huge because against bosses or a big crowd of monsters poison imbuement skills have a chance to create a, a puddle and then we have infinite poison imbuement while we're standing in the puddle super strong uh next which is another item that is so powerful to this build is that is the umbra crux this was uh just recently fixed but it is super powerful Whenever we pop a sub skill, we create a shade totem. So you'll see this right here when we pop a trap. It creates this shade totem and it pops for a lot of damage for almost seven seconds. Any damage it takes is replicated. So this is huge, right? And this is also what gives us so much intervention in the build. Um, super powerful. This makes this build very, very strong. So I definitely highly suggest you get this. Trade for it, buy for it. If not, you can find it in the Infernal Horde game mode. Next, we got high velocity here on our ring, and then we put uh, barrage arrows now pierce, which is great, and, and we have increased attack speed, which is even better. Um, on our ring and our amulet, we really want to get poison imbuement last for more cast, so that way we have more chances to cast it. That way we always have the uptime no matter what. On our amulet, we have the same thing, poison imbuement increase. Um, and then we have branching volleys here, which is arrows ricochet from barrage, which is awesome. The other big one here is you want the, the alchemy advantage here, which is fantastic. Um, and then last but not least, Ring of Starless Skies. This is 100% mandatory for this build. So you need Andes, you need Starless Skies, you do not have to have Tyrials, but you need Starless Skies. This is what's gonna allow us to spam even more uh, barrages and it's gonna reduce our cost, which is fantastic. And more importantly, it helps with our lucky hit and attack speed. So very, very strong there. Next, let's go into the Paragon board. Again, all this stuff is going to be linked down in the description below. So we have Fluidity for more damage and Energy Regeneration. We got Control for more damage, especially against CC targets and Frozen enemies. Then we got Canny for even more non-fizz damage, which is a multiplicative damage multiplier. We got Bane for more Poison damage, which is huge. Poison effects have a chance to deal double the amount of their damage over time, which is just great. And then we got Tracker for even more poison damage. So this build is pretty straightforward. We are also taking Exploit Weakness for more damage. We are taking uh, No Witness for more damage. I'm almost to the max, which is fantastic on the ultimate skills. Um, and then we're also taking Deadly Ambush because we're using Traps. And then we're also taking Eldritch Bounty because we're using Imbuement skills, which increases the damage from that Imbuement. So very, very powerful here. Um, the other thing with No Witness is our ultimate skill gains 10% multiplicative damage from our damage with ultimate bonus. So that is the main reason why in our weapons, we are rocking diamonds for more ultimate damage, which just gives us a higher multiplicative multiplier. So yeah, guys, that's the build for the quick showcase. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna fight Uber Durial. And this is pretty straightforward. You're just gonna pop Shadow Step, pop your traps, pop Smoke Grenade, your Poison Abutment, and just blast. We're gonna pop our trap down. And then we're just going to destroy him. We're just going to destroy him. 
It is easy peasy. He's running. Get back here. Oh, and he's dead. Right on phase one, too. Look at that. This build is insane. I was really hoping to get a mythic there for the video. That would have been sweet. But this might be the best rogue build in the game. And now I'm like bugging right there. So yeah, this is barrage. Wait, what am I saying? Multi-shot rogue, everybody. Multi-shot rogue. We need to go ahead and just make that transition from barrage to multi-shot. Barrage no longer exists. It is 100% multi-shot. I need everybody to second that in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. Like the video. Let's get this over 100 likes. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.